Hey everybody, we're back in the shop today and we're going to be taking a look at this 115 piece set of M35 Cobalt drills from Harbor Freight. I'm going to find out if they're made from recycled disappointment or if they can actually cut metal. This is the most expensive set of drill bits that money can buy from Harbor Freight and that means they're dirt cheap. While I was trying to decide which drills to get, I came across a Reddit post from a guy asking if this exact set was any good. And here are some of what people told him. Garbage. We have one at work that they had before I started. 60% of them are dull as cardboard or broken. No, less than useless. The Warrior line of consumables is so unbelievably bad. Harbor Freight drill bits are horrendous. Despite all those negative reviews, I obviously still purchased the set, so why don't I do that? I'm going to explain how I came to make that decision, and I've never understood reviews where the reviewer leaves that information out. How can you determine if a review is relevant if you don't know the reviewer's use case or thought process? I'm going to briefly talk about two alternative cobalt drill sets that I also looked at, one from Bosch and one from Milwaukee. Then we'll get down to business, putting holes in steel and aluminum on the mill and brass on the lathe. For all you folks whose attention span is so short that you get bored when you blink, feel free to skip ahead a few minutes. And I know you real machinists are going to get on to me for occasionally saying drill bits instead of drills. Out of all my bad habits, it's probably the least likely to kill me, so I just live with it. I've had my little PM25 mill for quite a while. The lathe is new to me and it's motivated me to do more metal projects, which means I keep wanting cobalt drills and I keep on not having them. And the next thing I want to make is an extension rod for my camera mount because a couple more inches sure would make a big difference. Mm -hmm. In order to use that extension rod, I'm going to need to make an adapter. In order to make that adapter, I'm going to need to tap some quarter 20 holes, which requires a number 7 drill bit. 1364 would work too, and you can see where this is going. I need some drills. For you folks whose countries collectively learned to count to 10 in 1795, a number 7 drill is around 5.1 millimeters. I checked every hardware store around, but none of them sold individual cobalt drills in the sizes that I needed. I did find a few number sevens whose material wasn't identifiable, but they looked cheaper than me on my first date, so I let those pass. The Menards near me has two in stock from Bosch. The cheaper of the two is a 14-piece set for 35 bucks, and of course that one doesn't have what I need. The step up from that one is 60 bucks for 21 pieces, and that does have what I need, but when I took a look under the hood, I wasn't real excited. You know, spending an extra 25 bucks to go from 14 to 21 is not great when only three of those seven bits are actually unique sizes. The others are all duplicates. That 21 piece set does have the 1364, so it was a contender. But again, it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Checking the Home Depot, I found a nice Milwaukee price at 120 for 29 pieces. This set contains zero duplicates. They're all unique sizes, and my initial impression is that it's probably pretty high quality. But being the card-carrying penny pincher that I am, $4 a bit is a hard pill to swallow. Unfortunately for me, the part of my brain responsible for learning to buy once, cry once, left for milk and cigarettes when I was a kid, and he told me he'd be right back. And on that note, I wanted to check Harbor Freight. Well, they've got a 115 piece set of cobalt drills on clearance for a hundred bucks. And because the Harbor Freight marketing team has psychic powers, they knew I wanted to buy the set even before I did. So a few days ago, they preemptively sent me a 25% off coupon for any single item in the store. Hmm, 115 cobalt drills for 75 bucks. Sounds a whole heck of a lot better than 21 for 60 or 29 for 120. That's 65 cents a bit, and that is something that this penny pincher can get excited about. Because I read those terrible reviews about the Harbor Freight set, I wanted to see what people were saying about that Milwaukee $120.29 piece set. I couldn't find much about it on Reddit, but the reviews on Milwaukee's own website were brutal. And here's some highlights. Sharp but brittle. One snapped on me while drilling cast iron. I'm careful with these, so both surprised and disappointed, not recommended. I can't recommend Red Helix Cobalt Bits. All the bits are shot. Disappointed based on the price paid. I had three of these bits melt while drilling through stainless steel. Nope. Other than wood, don't bother trying. There were a few good reviews too, but it really made me think that a lot of the bad reviews could be more of a review of the person operating the tool and less of a review of the tool itself. Harbor Freight and the Warrior brand in particular doesn't exactly inspire confidence. I own many tools from Harbor Freight and some are damn good, but I've had a few that wore out even faster than my New Year's resolutions. That's why I wanted to get these tested to see how well they perform. And so I went out to the most magical place on earth and bought this set. If they actually work, the value is incredible. All right, I'm done running my mouth. Let's get right into it. Are these things worth 65 cents each or not? The little package that it comes in is absolutely garbage. 
The metal case is flimsy as well. It is not square. It wobbles. The clasp is broken. The clasp is rusty. It's hard to close and doesn't want to stay latched. It's a piece of junk. Now, if I'm judging a book by its cover, this is a pretty crappy cover. I don't see anything missing, which is something that a few people noted in the reviews that I didn't highlight. Man, these little ones are tiny. Here's a spreadsheet I put together showing all the sizes in this set and their metric conversions. Feel free to pause the video, print off a copy if you want, or if enough folks ask for it, I could just put a link in the description on uh, Google Sheets. There are no metric, but it has so many sizes that you can get off and get pretty close for all but the most demanding precision. So if you need to drill a metric hole, this will probably still get you there. Let's check spec to see their tolerances and see how they do. We'll start with the 40 thousandths. We'll do the number seven since that's what I need for this project and we'll try the half inch size as well. I'm curious, anybody else who owns this set, what have your experiences been? How have they held up for you? What is your use case? You know, Do you use them in a handheld drill, which I think for an M35 set, you can get away with that, but you probably still have a pretty high risk of them snapping. You really want to use these in, in machine tools, you know, a drill press, a lathe or a mill, something rigid. Uh, especially if, if you get a, an M42 set, I think those are exclusively for use in rigid machinery. We'll use this 1 8 bit to put a hole in some run of the mill inch and a quarter 6061 aluminum bar stock. I'm going to use this aluminum to make a little custom tool holder for a special cutter that I'll be using on an upcoming project. While I'm drilling this on the CNC mill, I'm just doing it manually, giving it a few pecks to get started, and then giving it the full send. The Precision Matthews 25 maxes out at 2500 RPM, which is lower than I'd like for aluminum. I'd prefer about double that for an 8 inch bit, but as you can see, it eats right through it. Next, we'll do some brass on the lathe. This is 3 8 inch brass rod. I'm facing the end and I'll hit it with the center drill to help my number seven get started. 260 machines really well. My RPMs are low right now. I didn't want to do a belt change. You can see that some brass got hung up in the drill, but it's still cut just fine. I'll put some internal quarter 20 threads for that extension rod that I mentioned earlier. Our Harbor Freight number seven cut through this brass like it was butter and I'm not surprised. Finally, let's push some steel. I'm going to go back to the Precision Matthews CNC conversion, and this time I'm going to let the CNC run the drill. We'll see how it goes. I'll be using a 7 16 inch drill, and I'll be running a chip breaking cycle, which means it takes little pecks and then retracts, but it does not do a full retract. My machine doesn't have enough horsepower to use the maximum feed rates, but it looks like it's cutting through that steel just fine. Just give it a good squirt and it'll go right in. Mm -hmm. Later, I'm going to use an end mill to bring this hole up to 0.508 final dimension. Let's take a look at that bit and see if it has any wear and tear on it after running through the steel. If you've got any thoughts or questions, please leave a comment and let me know. Were the folks on Reddit right to dunk on this set so hard? I don't think so, but what do I know? Now I'll give my final thoughts in just a moment, but if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. I will be so thankful for your support and it honestly makes a much bigger difference than most people realize. My other channel is called Iron and Gold and I'll be going into a lot more detail about the projects that I'm making on the mill, the lathe, and around the shop. If you're interested in that type of content, I'd love to see you there. The link is in the description. Let's wrap this up. For 65 cents a bit, these will make a fine set for medium duty use. Hell, I'd probably keep a few sets around a production shop just because they're so handy and such a good value. Will I eventually buy some really nice M42 cobalt bits? Yeah, I will. But until then, I am damn pleased with these.